The photosynthetic efficiency is the fraction of light energy converted into chemical energy during photosynthesis in plants and algae. Photosynthesis can be described by the simplified chemical reaction, 6 hours 2O plus 6 CO2 plus energy is C6H12O6 plus 6O2, where C6H12O6 is glucose. The value of the photosynthetic efficiency is dependent on how light energy is defined a euro it depends on whether we count only the light that is absorbed, and on what kind of light is used. It takes 8 photons to utilize one molecule of CO2. The Gibbs free energy for converting a mole of CO2 to glucose is 114 kilocalories, whereas 8 moles of photons of wavelength 600 nanometers contains 381 kilocalories, giving a nominal efficiency of 30%. However, photosynthesis can occur with light up to wavelength 720 nanometers so long as there is also light at wavelengths below 680 nanometers to keep photosystem do operating. Using longer wavelengths means less light energy is needed for the same number of photons and therefore for the same amount of photosynthesis. For actual sunlight, where only 45% of the light is in the photosynthetically active wavelength range, the theoretical maximum efficiency of solar energy conversion is approximately 11%. In actuality, however, Plants do not absorb all incoming sunlight and do not convert all harvested energy into biomass, which results in an overall photosynthetic efficiency of 3 to 6 percent of total solar radiation. If photosynthesis is inefficient, excess light energy must be dissipated to avoid damaging the photosynthetic apparatus. Energy can be dissipated as heat, or emitted as chlorophyll fluorescence. Typical efficiencies equals plants equals quoted value sunlight to be your mass efficiency the following is a breakdown of the energetics of the photosynthesis process from photosynthesis by Hall and Rao starting with the solar spectrum falling on a leaf 47% loss due to photons outside the 400 to euro 700 nanometers active range 30% of the inbound photons are lost due to incomplete absorption or photons hitting components other than chloroplasts 24% of the absorbed photon energy is lost due to degrading short wavelength photons to the 700 nanometers energy level, 68%. Of the utilized energy is lost in conversion into D glucose, 35 a euro 45% of the glucose is consumed by the leaf in the processes of dark and photorespiration, stated another way, 100% sunlight and non-bioavailable photons waste is 47%, leaving 53% of 30% of photons are lost due to incomplete absorption, leaving 37% of 24% is lost due to wavelength mismatch degradation to 700 nanometers energy, leaving 28.2% of 32% efficient conversion of ATP and NADPH to D glucose, leaving 9% of 35 a euro 40% of sugar is recycled consumed by the leaf in dark and photorespiration leaving 5.4% net leaf efficiency. Many plants lose much of the remaining energy on growing roots. Most crop plants store 0.25% to 0.5% of the sunlight in the product. Sugar cane is exceptional in several ways, yielding peak storage efficiencies of 8%. Photosynthesis increases linearly with light intensity at low intensity, but at higher intensity this is no longer the case. Above about 10,000 lux or 100 watts per square meter the rate no longer increases. Thus, most plants can only utilize 10% of full midday sunlight intensity. This dramatically reduces average achieved photosynthetic efficiency in fields compared to peak laboratory results. However, real plants have lots of redundant, randomly oriented leaves. This helps to keep the average illumination of each leaf well below the midday peak enabling the plant to achieve a result closer to the expected laboratory test results using limited illumination. Only if the light intensity is above a plant-specific value, called the compensation point the plant assimilates more carbon and releases more oxygen by photosynthesis than it consumes by cellular respiration for its own current energy demand. Photosynthesis measurement systems are not designed to directly measure the amount of light absorbed by the leaf. Nevertheless, 
the light response curves that the class produces do allow comparisons in photosynthetic efficiency between plants. Equals algae and other monocellular organisms equals, from a 2010 study by the University of Maryland, photosynthesizing cyanobacteria have been shown to be a significant species in the global carbon cycle, accounting for 20 a euro 30% of Earth's photosynthetic productivity and convert solar energy into biomass stored chemical energy at the rate of 450 TW. Worldwide figures, according to the cyanobacteria study above, this means the total photosynthetic productivity of Earth is between 1500 a euro 2250 TW, or 47,300 a euro 71,000 exajoules per year. Using this source's figure of 178,000 TW of solar energy hitting the Earth's surface, the total photosynthetic efficiency of the planet is 0.84% to 1.26%. Efficiencies of various biofuel crops, popular choices for plant biofuels include, oil palm, soybean, castor oil, sunflower oil, safflower oil, corn ethanol, and sugarcane ethanol. An analysis of a proposed Hawaiian oil palm plantation claimed to yield 600 gallons of biodiesel per acre per year. That comes to 2835 watts per acre or 0.7 watts per meter too. Typical insulation in Hawaii is around 5.5 kilowatt hours slash M2 day or 230 watts. For this particular oil palm plantation, if it delivered the claimed 600 gallons of biodiesel per acre per year, would be converting 0.3% of the incident solar energy to chemical fuel. Total photosynthetic efficiency would include more than just the biodiesel oil, so this 0.3% number is something of a lower bound. Contrast this with a typical photovoltaic installation, which would produce an average of roughly 22 watts per meter too, throughout the year. Furthermore, the photovoltaic panels would produce electricity, which is a high-quality form of energy, whereas converting the biodiesel into mechanical energy entails the loss of a large portion of the energy. On the other hand, a liquid fuel is much more convenient for a vehicle than electricity, which has to be stored in heavy, expensive batteries. Most crop plants store 0.25% to 0.5% of the sunlight in the product. Sugarcane is exceptional in several ways to yield peak storage efficiencies of 8%. Ethanol fuel in Brazil has a calculation that results in, per hectare per year, the biomass produced corresponds to 0.27 TJ. This is equivalent to 0.86 watts per meter 2. Assuming an average insulation of 225 watts per meter 2, the photosynthetic efficiency of sugarcane is 0.38 percent. Sucrose accounts for little more than 30 percent of the chemical energy stored in the mature plant. 35% is in the leaves and stem tips, which are left in the fields during harvest, and 35% are in the fibrous material left over from pressing. C3 versus C4 and CAM plants, C3 plants use the Kelvin cycle to fix carbon. C4 plants use a modified Kelvin cycle in which they separate ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate carboxylase oxygenase from atmospheric oxygen fixing carbon in their mesophyll cells and using oxalocetate and malate to ferry the fixed carbon to our ubisco and the rest of the Calvin cycle enzymes isolated in the bundle sheath cells. The intermediate compounds both contain four carbon atoms, which gives C4. In crassulation acid metabolism, time isolates functioning a ubisco from high oxygen concentrations produced by photosynthesis, in that O2 is evolved during the day and allowed to dissipate then, while at night atmospheric CO2 is taken up and stored as malic or other acids. During the day, CAM plants close stomata and use stored acids as carbon sources for sugar, etc. production. The C3 pathway requires 18 ATP for the synthesis of one molecule of glucose while the C4 pathway requires 20 ATP. Despite this reduced ATP efficiency, C4 is an evolutionary advancement, adapted to areas of high levels of light, where the reduced ATP efficiency is more than offset by the use of increased light. The ability to thrive despite restricted water availability maximizes the ability to use available light. 
The simpler C3 cycle which operates in most plants is adapted to wetter darker environments, such as many northern latitudes corn, sugar cane, and sorghum are C4 plants. These plants are economically important in part because of their relatively high photosynthetic efficiencies compared to many other crops. Pineapple is a CAM plant. See also, photosynthetically active radiation, energy conversion efficiency. References <laughs>